There is no better way to blow off some steam than to expose yourself to 130 mile per hour winds inside of a multi-story building. Thrill enthusiasts and professional skydivers alike go to iFly Austin for this exact reason. It's a unique experience and it's something fun and different to do. The iFly facility in Austin is one of 22 across the country that allow thrill seekers to experience the rush of skydiving without jumping from a perfectly good plane. Among those willing to take the jump here is 12-year-old Isabella Panaloza, who is following in her dad's jumpsuit. My dad, he's a Navy SEAL, so he used to do skydiving, so I it looked really interesting and I kind of want to try it out for myself. First-time flyers must take a safety course before they suit up, and the people who run iFly say it's safe for most ages. Each jumper is under the supervision of two instructors. One instructor controls the speed of the wind, while the other is inside the tube helping the flyer stay safe and have fun. Things are looking up here at iFly in Austin, Texas. Whether if it's a work event, a birthday party, or you're just looking for an adrenaline rush, there's no shortage of fun here. Uh, uh, dude, nice. And that goes for the instructors too. Not only do they need to have the right skills and safety yeah, know-how, but instructors like Nick Riedel are here to have fun and make the experience truly memorable. Uh, I love flying myself and I love uh, teaching other people how to fly. You know, seeing other people smile and enjoy this as much as I do you know, makes it worth it. iFly offers four skill levels to complete, so with each flight, Riedel and company will teach flyers something new. And at the end of the process, you too will be a free-falling superstar. The past few years have seen a resurgence in record sales with vinyl outpacing CDs. Superfly here in San Marcos opened in 2012 and has been successful selling records, hosting regular live shows and offering a unique atmosphere. We do as much as we can to support the music scene in Texas and just like artists in general. But one day stands out at this location. According to management, Record Store Day gets double the amount of sales than they get in an average work week. Record Store Day is an international event practiced in France and America that has existed since 2007. I'm a huge advocate for vinyl and people getting into the hobby and experiencing music the way I personally believe it should be experienced. Um, so the fact that it's an ever-growing movement I think is absolutely fantastic. I hope it continues for decades and decades and decades. Artists like Metallica, Jack White and Dave Grohl of the Foo Fighters are backers of this movement saying it promotes America's independent record stores. I think the promotion of vinyl is very important because you know an artist puts out an entire album as a concept to me so I think it's important for us to get back to appreciating music in its entirety so that's one of the reasons I support the day to support the vinyl movement. San Marcos is one of the fastest growing cities in America, and with that growth comes growing pains. One major headache for commuters is along Ocarina Springs Drive, where the Loop 82 overpass construction project is in overdrive. As of now, we have uh, uh, requested that the bus stop right at Charles Austin be closed just because that's where they're actually doing most of the construction in this particular phase. This phase is uh, scheduled to take 25 days. The new overpass loop will help traffic bypass the railroad tracks and multiple stoplights along Ocarina, eventually making it for a more direct ride to I-35. But until the project is complete, students and residents will face heavy delays on their commute. Getting worse before getting better has never been more true than here in San Marcos. One of the busiest streets in the city, Ocarina Springs Drive, is currently reduced to one lane in either direction. TxDOT is working to stay on schedule and minimize the time the road will be reduced to one lane. While the city and state see the Loop 82 project as a necessary result of growth, 
Some San Martians feel the growth and the resulting construction are changing the city. The city advises drivers to use alternate routes like Thorpe Street during the construction. Commuters who must use Ocarina Springs to drive to access their homes or businesses should plan for an extra 15 to 30 minutes on their commute. Do you remember the people in high school that got large subwoofers in their cars? Well, for people in the base community, that initial interest has turned into a life-changing passion. It's no longer a trip down to Best Buy to pick up some speakers and an amplifier for their new car. Baseheads devote thousands of dollars, insane car modifications, and years of learning how to take their installs to the next level. The competition side of the sport has almost no financial benefits besides the discounted gear. But the costs of building and maintaining a system, then bringing it to shows can cost a competitor thousands of dollars a year. Yet hundreds of people travel hours to car shows just to hear some of the vehicles they have watched being built online. Sometimes waiting in line like an amusement park ride just to get their demo. So why would a person knowingly enter competitions with no hopes for financial gain, ruin their vehicles, but still have a gigantic smile and a headache at the end of each show when they drive home? Let's find out. Hi, my name is Kenneth Reyes, and I've been in car audio for a little over 15 years. What's, what's your occupation, Ken? Uh, I work at a ready-mix concrete plant. Uh, I'm the uh, head of maintenance there. Uh, I'm in charge of making sure that the product uh, is clean and goes out the door in a timely fashion. Ken, tell me a little bit about what you got in your current build. Currently I have 415s on 11,000 watts. Um, it's in a blow-through uh, setup, which means that I have my box in my bed with the hole cut through the bed and the cab with all the bass directed inside the cab. No, how, how loud is something like that going to be? Um, typically it's around 150 to 153 decibels. What's the allure of this high-end car audio? I think it's, it's the feedback I get from my friends. Uh, when they sit in the car, they say, oh man, that's awesome, that's the loudest thing I've ever heard. And just the excitement they get puts a smile on my face. I'm Bobby Hartman. I've been in the car audio for about five years now. What's what's your occupation, Bobby? I do fire uh, fire safety. I, I put in fire sprinkler systems to schools all over the place, Fort Hood, everywhere. And uh, w what do you have in your current build? Right now, uh, four uh, XSV2 Crossfire 15s on uh, Crescendo 5500. And uh, how how much? Does that all cost? Uh, altogether, uh, I'm probably over over ten grand in the build right now. And how how loud is something like this? Uh, this one it does it 157.5 dB. What exactly do you enjoy about the hobby and the competition scene? Just the the building it and meeting new people that like enjoy the same thing as you and seeing seeing a lot of people's reactions to it just to see what what these things like i said what they'll do yeah,
The people that think negatively about you, about you and you know everyone in the hobby, what would you have to say to them? Just wish they'd come out and, and, and look and see how it actually is. We don't always just drive around and play these you know loud machines everywhere. Uh, just come out and meet the people. It's a lifestyle. It's not. There's nothing bad about it.